by 2050, Africa's population is expected to double, yet one in five people on the continent remains undernourished. The land remains the same or even dwindling, but the demand for food keeps growing. So we need to be very, very innovative and smart to be able to feed our populations. Agriculture needs a second green revolution. Roots, tuber and banana crops, RTBs, may hold the key to transforming the livelihoods of millions. That high productivity or yield potential really plays the RTB crops as a key crop for food security. To realize this potential, we need investment and scientific advancement. But can we win this race against time? We can actually fasten these processes so that we can catch up with their rising need. We cannot stay with our former conventional breeding approaches. In many ways, the future of food production lies in the hands of women like Chantel Vermilia. The Congolese smallholder fled to Uganda after militiamen ransacked her home. She and her family spent weeks hiding in a forest before reaching a tented camp, where they were granted asylum. Despite the trauma, they were among the fortunate ones. Vumilia had to leave everything behind. The only item she managed to save was a photo album, a reminder of better times. However, her ordeal didn't end upon arriving in Uganda. The lack of food and resources during her flight resulted in severe undernourishment for her two children. Momoya, Momoya, Arigondra, Wikimbiri. Namupereka kwa opitari, wakaniambia ngo, hakuna, hakuna ugondra. Namutunza kwa makriniki, ah, nyuma kakufa. Vumilia and millions of other refugees were settled in agricultural communities across Uganda, where they received small plots of land to sustain themselves. In her community, they grow cassava, matoke, potatoes and sweet potatoes, crops known as RTBs, for roots, tubers and bananas. RTBs mature quickly and can be harvested multiple times a year and they provide essential micronutrients. Most importantly, RTBs require less space and fertilizer than cereals and are drought tolerant. They are ideal for challenging environments and for farmers with limited resources, like Familia. Though she never fully recovered from the loss of her two daughters, she has since given birth to two healthy children. Today, Familia is harvesting cassava leaves, which, cooked along with sweet potatoes, are her children's favorites. Mm. 
obyo turabyo turakora byona nibyo turarya tukajya no kuronde mirimo mu banasho no tukayifuna tukihaye nke bitoki ebyo tutine baryo tukabyiha mu banasho no atubuzima bwa kuno tumaze kubumanyira in africa 70% of food supplies are produced by small holders without machines or irrigation in a climate stressed world they need crops that are versatile resilient affordable and easy to grow. Against this backdrop, the International Food Policy Research Institute projects that RTBs will dominate food production in Africa by 2050. This revolution isn't only driven by farmers. Advancements in genetic and molecular breeding are changing the landscape. Winifred Aketch from the International Potato Center, or SIP, is checking for pest infestation of a new test sequence of sweet potato varieties. With improved technologies, Aketch can now develop a new variety in under five years, a process that once took decades. One of the key traits that we are breeding for is resistance. The disease pressure in East Africa, but especially in Uganda, is way too high. So most times we get varieties that have been bred and released and it's resistant, but when they come to Uganda, they break down. A catch is part of RTB Breeding, an initiative funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and led by SIP. The initiative not only accelerates the breeding process with cutting-edge technology, but also focuses on developing hundreds of adapted RTB varieties, tailored to the diverse environmental, social and cultural needs of local communities. The old land races cannot cope with challenges of climate change, cannot cope with the needs, the, the nutritional requirements of today's um, people. So you continuously need science to come in and adapt new varieties to be able to sustain nutrition and income potential for the farmers. For too long, communities in Africa have depended heavily on cereals, which are poor in nutrients, land consuming and vulnerable to drought. As rapid urbanization puts pressure on food systems and land, it's crucial to diversify crops. Titus Alakai, a leading plant health expert, sees this as an opportunity. The RTB crops have not uh, traditionally received as much attention. And uh, now that great strides have been made uh, to set the base for breeding and uh, the tools that enable more efficient breeding have been developed and are being refined. I think it's, uh, it's time that uh, investments into the RTB crops need to be increased because the potential is hardly tapped. Back in Chegekwa, Familia takes her harvest to the nearest market. While RTBs present significant opportunities, they also come with challenges. Their bulky nature makes transportation difficult, and they perish quickly. To maximize their value, RTBs must be sold or processed rapidly. Even so, the sweet potatoes already make a difference for Familia. Mina kamata kidogo ni tia museving. Ingine zinabakia ni uze mafugo ya kunyumbu. Kuku, mbata, labiti, haiyo tu. Mbone ka ingine ka kidogo karibakia ni uze chumbi. The economic impact of RTB crops has often been underestimated but processing and marketing these crops creates jobs, particularly for women and youth. SIP estimates that RTB investments 
could boost the economy in sub-Saharan Africa by 3% annually. Yet, Familia has her very own reasons for growing RTBs. Unajeuza tu kubikula. 